Absolutely massive news when it comes to the progression of the battle pass within season two and a whole lot more. If you guys want to know more, we'll stay tuned throughout the whole video to understand all the details. How's it going everybody? Kevin here once again giving our news and informational video when it comes to Halo. Today we got some great news about Season 2 and what's to be coming for the Battle Pass for us all. Now if you guys have been following the channel for at least like the last few months, you know that I've been a big advocate for allowing people to earn credits to pay for cosmetics within the Battle Pass and well, that looks like it's going to happen with Season 2. The head of design, Jerry Hook, said, Thanks to your continued feedback, we are happy to confirm credits will be earnable in Season 2's Battle Pass. That means you'll be able to earn credits as part of your Halo Infinite progression. We'll have more to share on this as we get closer to Season 2. On top of that, Unishek also went on to Halo Waypoint to clarify some more points to give us some more information about things going on with Halo as well. Not only echoing the sentiment from Jerry Hook talking about lowering the prices within the store, which we just saw, as well as individual items coming to the store, they also mentioned here saying that they are currently working on a big team battle matchmaking patch as well. But right now at the moment, while as most people can't play big team battle, they are actually going to be removing all the challenge big team battle challenges for next week when the rotation comes in. So guys, expect to have no BTB working by next week. And you should continue on talking about the uh, big team battle update. And right now they're just looking at it. No effective date right now when we will get a big team battle update. But this is absolutely massive, huge change when it comes to the economy of Halo Infinite, which is one of the things that they actually talked about for the mid-February update about the economy of Halo Infinite. We already saw pretty big changes come to the store for Halo Infinite when it comes to the Cyber Showdown event where most of the prices were basically cut in half, 40% reduction if not more. And how right now I feel like the store is actually in a pretty good spot. Like it's not like obviously like I prefer all my microtransactions or at least all my cosmetics to be microtransactions free but obviously we're not in that kind of situation with you know if it's multiplayer being a free to play game this is pretty much standard for what we're going to see for moving forward and i think the prices right now are not the best but they're fair for the most part though one thing that was promised to us that we haven't seen yet are individual items coming to the store and we'll sketch hit up reddit to kind of clarify this whole thing as well saying store slash economy changes are going to happen gradually over time the main weekly offer price reduction goes into effect this week we've been the cyber showdown week expect to see more changes and some specific content experiments in the weeks to come as per jerry's tweet talking about the reduction in pricing and what's going to be coming out later on saying that they will be listening and learning in season one and and i anticipate broader changes coming further down the line with season two of course this response came many days before the recent announcement we just had about being able to earn credits within season two of the battle pass which i'm like Thank God we're finally be able to do that because pretty much every game that has a free to play the mechanic to it allows players to do just that. And the great thing about allowing players to earn content and earn credits within the game through that battle pass progression is one, you're rewarding players for their time, which has been a huge issue with Halo Infinite right now. Is that right now you're really just kind of like grinding out content. Sometimes you feel like it's worth it that week. Sometimes it's not really feeling like it. Though if you're always making progression to the next payout, like of literal money payouts for the game, that's certainly like a way, one way to get people motivated to keep grinding out your game. The biggest hurdle for myself from what I've played of free to play games is that you want to buy into the game. As long as you feel like you're committed to the game that you want to keep playing that game, Buying into the microtransactions won't feel that severe, especially as Halo Infinite is a 10 year game, your cosmetics are gonna stay with you for, well, quite some time. And I've always felt like the biggest hurdle when it comes to this situation is getting people to make that first purchase. And if you give people free money by playing through the game, it gives them that opportunity to make that choice if they wanna spend that money in the store, if they wanna spend that money in the battle pass. So if you give free to play players that opportunity to pay money within the store, most likely it will most pay back to you in the future of them wanting to pay more money for more customization options as it kind of like breaks the seal in a way when it comes to people being so cut off from paying anything into the Halo Infinite microtransaction system. 
I know a lot of people cite the lack of content as the reason why they stopped playing Halo Infinite, but I really feel like it's more of a lack of motivation to grind out Halo Infinite. As most people who play Halo are casual players, they don't really care to like try to get better at the game or try to grind up their ranks or improve at any kind of situation within the game. They just want to play the game how they want to play it as their free time and also just grind to like, you know earn new content and things like that. Once you get through all that content, you feel like there's nothing there for you to do. Well, once you have a carry at the end of the stick being free money to get you to buy some more microtransactions within the store, it's a great way to introduce people who are new to the system, which Halo Infinite has never been a free to play game or had this kind of type of microtransaction system. This is an amazing way to get people to introduce them to the system get them used to spending credits within the store when it comes to buying microtransactions. So when they want to spend money with their actual money rather than their actual game time, they will definitely have some benefits to it. Now, how much money will you earn for your credits for your time play for the battle pass? My assumption is I think most of the time with, with Fortnite, you earn a little bit more than you, you pay into when it comes to the microtransaction credit system that they have for that game. I think for uh, Call of Duty, if you play throughout the battle pass, you earn enough credits to buy yourself another battle pass. So my assumption is be very similar to Call of Duty in a way where at least you'll be able to earn enough money to buy another battle pass. So like, what, I think it's like 10,000 credits if I remember correctly. Which I think is a very fair system. If you don't want to buy into the microtransaction store, you can at least like play through the game enough to where you earn credits and then you're able to buy the next battle pass which will helpfully provide you more actual content for your free to play players because for season one guys it was pretty freaking weak and i really expect to see season two to provide a lot more content a lot more value to players for grinding out that seat 100, 100 tiers and hopefully providing them more customization and more value to their time We've already seen these massive changes when it comes to the 10 Riot event. We saw the first time it came around, it was all like challenge swaps and XP progression. That's not what people want. They actually passed season 10. They provide actual content, which people really want. Uh, I saw leaks of what the Cyber Showdown event was going to be, which is going to be a lot of content of being like, you know, challenge swaps and XP progression tokens and some customization mixed in with it. But once we got the Cyber Showdown event, it was all just like actual content that people would want to customize their character with. Now, what kind of content they consider to be worth of whole tier value within season two, uh, that's up to the old three for three's interpretation. Obviously, this is going to be a bit of a kind of a tug of war in a way when it comes to like people wanting to have as much customization as possible for the battle pass, but also three for three wanted to kind of push back like, well, we also need you to pay a little money within the store so we keep this game afloat kind of thing. Overall, this is a massive step in the right direction for Halo Infinite, and I'm really excited to see how people will actually spend their free credits within the game. Will they actually buy microtransactions within the store, or will they save up that money for another battle pass, or will we get more money than an actual battle pass so they can actually spend a little extra of those credits to towards the store? I mean, we just have to wait and see until we actually get that information. Of course, once we get that information, I'll share it with you guys here on the channel as this is a developing story. So if you're new to the channel or missing any content from recently, check out the playlist right here. Got a link to all my Halo Infinite news and informational videos right there. Thank you so much for watching. I greatly appreciate it. I'll catch you on the next one. Peace out.